Welcome collectors and thank you for joining me for this installment of Diecast Emporium. Today we're going to be reviewing a brown box. I'm just kidding. As you can tell from the title, we're going to be reviewing the Menards 148-150 slash scale uh, container stacker crane. If you're not familiar with this type of machinery, you would typically find this in an intermodal yard, taking the containers from ships and loading them on trucks or trains. Pretty much anything you can think of in your house is shipped in these containers, usually from overseas. So let's begin the unboxing process. I picked this up at my local Menards store, but don't fret if you don't have a Menards near you. You can visit menards.com backslash trains and anything in their inventory, they can drop ship to you. So don't fret if you don't have a Menards near you. You can have one of these shipped directly to your front door. As I said, there is no commercial packaging other than this brown box. There is absolutely no way to ascertain what is inside other than this little barcode white sticker that's on one side of the box. A little blurry, but it reads... 148 scale die cast empty container handler country of origin China and then the Menards SKU number which for reference is 279-4232 you'll need that to look it up so you don't have to remember all this nonsense you would just type in Menards SKU 279-4232 all right I have already cut one end of this box open so that we can better access this more quickly as I've just said there is no commercial packaging other than the brown outer box. Here is the model inside. As you can see, you are supplied with not only the 148-150s crane, and we'll get to that in just a minute, but also a 20-foot um, container as well, which reads KDW, uh, which is the abbreviation of the manufacturer of this model. All right, to unbox it, take the clear plastic piece off. Here is the container, which is one thing that is inside the package. And then the only other thing is the crane. And with that done, we are ready to begin the unboxing, which we will do here in just a minute. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this short break. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Starting off, let's take a look at the supplied plastic uh, modeled 20-foot shipping container that you are provided. Again, it reads KDW on the box. There are two holes that are on one side, both sides actually, of the container, and that is how it fits to the stacking vehicle. There's the doors on the back of it. Here's the other side. There's the bottom, and then there is the front. Again, I will show you how to hook these up here in just a minute. The One of the most important things that I want to point out right now, so this is what is included, and this is a 20-foot container by Diecast Masters. As you can see, there is a significant height difference between this 20-foot container and this 20-foot container, which means that unfortunately, and I did not know this until I got these out for review to do for you guys, is that you cannot fit either the 20-foot or the 40-foot Diecast Masters containers inside this device on the uh, on the on the container stacker which is a huge disappointment because all that needed to really be done and engineered is for these sides of the container device to be able to be raised or lower to accommodate the slightly higher containers and unfortunately to my knowledge this is not functional these sides will extend and again I will show you that when we get into the container review but these do not go up or down. So that being said, I don't know if Menards offers a bunch of these containers separately. There were none at my Menards store when I picked this up that was on sale. Um, but again, that brings into question the question... Uh, that was a terrible transition. But that brings into question the uncertainty of scale with this model, whether it's 148 scale or 150 scale. Because if it's 148 scale, that would kind of explain the difference, really, between the two. So, that's the container. Let's now transition to a review of the stacker vehicle. Despite it not being licensed, in my opinion, it does mimic a representation of a real container stacker vehicle that you'd see in any intermodal yard. 
um, t- uh, specifically the ones that I have seen on the West Coast during my time and travels out in that particular part of the world. The rear axle, unfortunately, is not positionable or steerable. It is fixed in one place. But some nice details actually are the seat and the controls and the protection that is on top of the cab. You can see a little bit of extra protection that's on there. The simulated glass, which is done by a nice plastic piece, and there's even a windshield wiper on it. There are some mirrors that are on each side, but they do not have a silvered reflective surface. Of course, you could do that with a metallic marker if you wish to add a little bit of realism to it. In terms of that, that's about it for the detail. Now, the functionality is hit or miss with this model. I've already explained to you the limitations with the actual uh, container lift part. I'll demonstrate now that you can extend this out. So again, I don't have a 148 scale 40 foot container uh, to demonstrate or show you guys. But again, you can extend this out. And perhaps if I did have a 148 scale container, like I have a 148 scale 20 foot, potentially it would fit. Uh, but it definitely does not fit any of the Diecast Masters containers, which again is a bit of a disappointment. Because had it been able to accommodate this, that would have been absolutely amazing. But again, that's not uh, that's not a total deal breaker. And of course, that's not Diecast Masters' fault or anything. They're two completely different model manufacturers. So. This extends out, you can collapse it in, you can raise and lower it, and it goes so high that in fact it goes way off screen. But you can tilt this forward, just make sure you don't tilt it too far because these cylinders will spring out and you will have to figure out a way to get those back in the jacket. You can collapse this down. And now I'll show you how to attach the con container part to the actual container crane. These holes line up with these two extended portions here. So you gotta make sure that they're lined up and you can push them in. Make sure that again, that they're in there and they have a good bite on it. These two top pieces really just sit over it. Again, it's not a very tight or locking fit. Let's bring in our Diecast Masters container trailer. Now this is a 40 foot container trailer. Again, pardon my hand and my arm. So this would carry one of the 40-foot containers or two of the 20-foot containers. So let's mimic a pose of this container being loaded onto the truck in one of the ports. So you'd bring it up to the end here very carefully, and then you'd lower it back onto the truck. Then he would unlock from inside the cab the locking mechanisms on the container and then drive backwards and there you go so that concludes my review of the 148 slash 150 scale uh, menards container stacker crane it is very inexpensive it's a nice model to kind of fill out your collection or if you're modeling an intermodal yard uh, in 148 scale i would say definitely pick one up just because again they're very inexpensive. At the time of review, I picked this up on sale for under $25, so I think that's pretty good value. For those that are skilled out there who have far more skill than I would ever have, perhaps there is a way that you can modify this to accommodate the Diecast Masters containers. Again, I'm not sure how you would do that, but I'm sure there are some very skilled modelers that would be willing to take a risk and mess around with a very inexpensive model to make it a fantastic model. And if you are one of those individuals, I would love to see your finished product. So send me a photo uh, or a video of it on Instagram. I'd love to see your finished result. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down in the comments section below. Until next time, take care and be safe. I will see you in the next Diecast Emporium review.